Hey, Dan Mar here, and I am back once again with five more tips for Filipino virtual assistants who want to be even more successful when it comes to landing American business clients. And today we're going to talk about the five most common fears that I see among Filipino virtual assistants when it comes to working with American clients. I've worked with thousands of virtual assistants, both my own employees as well as the ones that I've done training for. I've also trained tens of thousands of Filipinos on data analysis work in the call centers. I've done a lot of teaching. I know the common fears that a lot of Filipinos have when it comes to interacting with Americans. The number one most common fear is no brainer. It's English, right? So conversational English and a fear of not having a strong enough grasp of English to carry on a conversation with an American is a big fear for Filipinos. So you have to put yourself in the mindset though of the client. Now, you may fear that clients may not understand you or they may make fun of you or they may not want to work with you because your English isn't perfect. That's not the case for like 90% of Americans. Most Americans are pretty okay with somebody not having perfect English because we're in a very diverse country with a lot of immigrants that come from all over. And maybe in the news you see something or you had a one bad experience at one time, but that's not most people. The best way to get better at conversational English and conquer the fear is to have conversations in English. Right. So I always encourage my call center agents to, you know, always speak English in the floor, even though they, want, they may want to converse in Tagalog um, in the break room or whatever. But when they're trying to practice their English, um, it's something that you, the more you do, the better you're going to get. So you have to conquer that fear through practice. The second most common fear I see is people afraid they don't have enough training. They're worried that they're not going to get trained. And they don't have the training previously, so they're going to fail. And before they even apply for the job, they talk themselves out of it because they don't think they have the right training. Well, let me give you a secret here. Most Americans don't get a lot of training. We, as a society, push ourselves to train ourselves and then to learn things on the job. There's not a lot of formal training for most of the jobs that we do. People that go to college to become doctors or lawyers, yeah, they get some kind of training. But the average person working in the average business probably didn't get a lot of training for that business. And if you're working for an entrepreneur, a business owner, somebody who's kind of a go-getter themselves, they're going to expect that out of you. They're going to want somebody who's a go-getter. So the last thing you want to do is focus on your lack of training. Either self-train, sign up for a course and get trained, or know that you'll learn it on the job. That ability to learn it on the job is really what people want. American clients will hire you if you show them that you can take the initiative and learn things on the job. So number three is client missing deadlines. And what this means is that you're worried that your stuff's not going to get done soon enough because they give you too much to do. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to get worried that you can't get everything done. You have to say something. You have to demonstrate what you can do in the time they allocate to you. This is really important because missing deadlines um, will lead to a lot of bad frustration between you and the client. Eventually, the client will probably want to move on. And it's common for a Filipino VAs to be worried about that. But you have to put that worry aside. You have to set yourself up for success by building systems that allow you to do reporting, to give them updates, to share with them what you did during your time. So that when deadlines do get missed because the client expected too much or was too aggressive, you can demonstrate why you got as far as you did. And this will overcome the fear of missing deadlines. Number four is giving constructive feedback. Filipinos in general have trouble giving feedback to foreigners and Americans especially, right? Because, oh my gosh, they're so successful. They're so rich. They're so smart. They're so... No, stop, right? You know, Americans are no better than Filipinos. And you should know that. So I shouldn't have to tell you that. But sometimes it may come across like they're superior to you or they're better than you. And when you have that mindset, it's going to be hard to give them feedback. So you got to put that mindset aside. If somebody's growing their business, if they're putting their passion into what they do every day, they're going to want to hear feedback so they don't miss opportunities, so they don't see something um, too late 
to fix. So you want to be careful how you give feedback. You want to first ask permission, can I give you feedback? And then you want to make sure that you're not just pointing out problems, but you're offering solutions as well. Like when you see somebody's doing something that's not having the best sales, um, don't just tell them, oh, your sales aren't working well. Tell them, you know what, for this product, maybe instead of selling it this way, we sell it this way. You want to give constructive feedback, right? Feedback that people will be able to go, hmm, you're right. Oh, let's try it that way. If you can do that, if you have the mindset that you're going to be able to be a part partner with your business, um, with your client, whatever they're doing, if you're part of their business, if you're thinking of them as somebody that you're trying to help grow and not just a job, you're trying to, you know, cross off things or do things every day. If you're trying to actually help them grow their business, they're going to see that and they're going to be open to your feedback. Number five, probably the most fearful of all fears that I see Filipino VAs have about working with American clients, with clients in general that are anywhere, whether it be in the Philippines or overseas, is not getting paid, right? So you have to be really, really clear how you want to get paid, how often you get paid. You don't want to take jobs where it's shady, where they're going to pay you a month down the road, where they're going to pay you based on performance. You need to get something that, sh- that is worth your time. If you're not getting paid every two weeks, on a regular basis, like every 1st and 15th or every 15th and 30th, then you probably should find a different client. Getting paid, if they're making money, they should be able to pay you. If they're not making money, they won't be able to pay you, it won't last very long. And you should see this coming, right? So if you have afraid, if you're afraid of taking a job because you did before and you got burned, if you took a job for somebody and they didn't pay you, well, next time, remember what it was like when you first talked to them and make sure you don't have this thing happen again by getting some reassurances, getting a contract, Letting, making sure they ask you how you want to get paid and how to facilitate that. If they're just going to pay you on PayPal and they don't ever really talk about it much, then it's not enough. You want to say, I want to get paid every two weeks. I, I need to get paid this amount of money at the minimum for it to make it worthwhile. If you're not having that conversation, which is hard to have, you're going to be successful. So if you have that fear of not getting paid, the best way to conquer it is to talk about it up front and look for jobs where it's very clear in the initial conversation how they're going to pay you. If you do this, you'll be able to get past that fear. So all of these fears, having to converse in English, not getting enough training, missing deadlines, afraid to give feedback, not getting paid, they're all very rational fears because I've worked with so many Filipinos and so many business owners that I've seen bad business owners and I've seen bad VAs. So both sides can come into a situation where they're a little skeptical. And this can cause fear. So the best thing to do is work for people with people that are referred to you by people you know. Going out there and taking some random job where somebody posts something on the internet and your gut tells you it's not a good job, you should trust your gut. Look for people that have a a history of working with Filipino VAs. Look for clients that are well-established, that are successful, that don't have a lot of big question marks about their business, and you'll be better off. I hope this helped. This is part of my series of tips on how to make Filipino VAs even more successful when working with American clients. So if you have any comments, please feel free to drop them below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, I want to thank you for your time. Get out there and have an amazing day.